<laughs> right. I forgot what I was going to say. When we started our conversion, one of the first things we did, and Lisa's just been pointing it out there, is we put a double swivel seat in. Now that created us another problem. It actually lifts the seat up three inches. So your legs, show them Lisa, don't touch the floor anymore. I have that problem, Lisa has it and Riley has it. So to get around the problem, we're gonna make a step, let me show you, to fit this area here. So when you're sat, like Lisa is, you'll be able to rest your feet. We're also gonna make it into storage and we're also gonna add a light to it. So let's get stuck in. Right, Lisa, you've got to get in that garage and make us one of these steps. <laughs> <laughs> we have a stockpile of wood left over from the build. Now, <clears throat> I've been umming an hour on what to do with it, and I think I've got enough offcuts to make this step. So today, we're just going to plan a few little things out. I've got a couple of little things I want to do in there, to be honest. Um, through the summer, we've realised that we could maybe do with a shelf around the window because the back of the seat keeps falling down. I'd like to make the bed so it extends another 300 mil and that'll make it as wide as a standard single so it'll feel a little bit more comfortable if I need to just jump in there at some point or for Riley as well. And uh, we have an issue with... <coughs> I can't be alone with this. When you open the back doors, the pillows just fall out. And usually they don't fall out onto nice pristine clean grass. It's usually bloody puddles or or roads or car parks and obviously then you've got to wash them so that's the plan today we're going to do a couple of little jobs tidy things up make things more usable in the van and uh, create a little bit more storage right one of the issues with coming along the back of this seat is the floor mounting points so obviously we're gonna to have to recess them into the back of the timber um, that we put along here how do we do that? Because this is at an angle that way, and this one is angled this way. So we need to get that angle there, get that angle there, and obviously do something to mark up and recess them. So we do have this handy little tool. I've already ran it up and set it. That gives you your angle. Now, I'm also going to use a bit of tape to mark that step in case that little step there is an issue. But yeah, this little bit of kit, um, obviously you can set it to any angle you want. But, um, I'll put a link in the description to it. I can't remember what it's called at the minute. It's got a pretty straightforward name, but it slipped my mind. <laughs> on that. I'll do is I'll just give that a little nip. Check it, make sure it hasn't moved. That's good. Right, we're going to transfer the marks onto the timber now. To get these metal recesses in the right place, I've got a piece of scrap timber. What we're going to do is we're going to mark it up from this corner here, going that way. Because this angle's going in that way and the same on that side once we've got that side in this side will just drop into place so if we mark from this corner all the way along where all these anchor points are that will give us a better indication and we can transfer that information onto the the good piece the piece that's going on the back so there's a couple of little welds on the back I, I've gone along with a pencil and marked it roughly but because of these welds on the back, I want to go and mark up a little bit better. We've now transferred the marks onto the back piece. And we're... Uh, oh, that one's... That one there, it's a little bit wrong. That mark being out doesn't really matter because whatever we take out the back, you're never going to see anyway. The only thing we need to check now is we put that little bit of tape on and what I've done is I've gone a little bit higher again just to, just to be on the safe side 
I'm just making sure all them cross lines there and there are in the right place. Always best to check them. Before you go rushing in, just check that your measurements are right. So this is the right edge, that's the sloping edge. Let me show you how this is going to sit. So that will sit in like that. I've marked it up, that's the back piece, but it's the front of the back. So I always put tape on the front. Um, and that's the angle where it butts up to the driver's seat. So let's um, let's start taking this out. I'm just going to use a plunge saw, go through um, to about just after that second dark one. <laughs> um, always wear a mask with that stuff because it's it's awful. It uh, just seems to sit on your chest if you if you get a good lungful for it, of it. Anyway, let's have a little look. Let's, I think I think they're going to be bang on them. We'll go and offer it up now and see how it sits. Lift that round. Put that in. <laughs> yep, like a gloves, a little gap there. Not really bothered about that because obviously it's metal and it moves. And by the time we get the braces in, that'll sit perfect. Is that kicking out? We need to take a little piece of that corner out. So, yeah. Same shape, so what we'll do is we'll just copy that onto there. That's what we need to take off. Transferred the angle of the seat onto that edge, and that fits perfect in there. And perfect in there. Right, let's offer that up now. Oh, yes, a bit better. We do need to. Chop that as well. So before I cut here, we're going to mark that distance there, measure that distance, and we'll measure it over there as well. Make sure we've got a, a really even gap. That's 200. That's 200. And that's 200 now. So our infill pieces will be 200. You want to play? You want to play? <laughs> she is coco loco. That's she. <laughs> Good girl. We haven't used the pocket jig in a while. So we've cut all the pieces that we need to wear uh, to brace the box. Just need to set this back up now. Well, it's always been set up for the uh, the 18 mil ply, so let's just clamp it up. Get a drill and drill that hole. <laughs> it's one crazy dog. Funny, but uh, crazy. Time to put all these pieces together. Ok, 
okay so I've offered it up and surprisingly it fits look at that perfect there perfect over there everything lines up everything lines up there we've trimmed this piece so when we screw it down everything will fit so we just need to seal all these edges up now put a little bit of wood on top of there to see to just show you how it's going to work so that would be zoom out a bit this will be a full length lid there'll be two pieces at the end that are profiled over there as well and this will just open and close so you can drop shoes in there umbrella and maybe even the dog food something like that Basically, what you're looking to do, ah, that was hot, is seal any surface that can come into contact with your, with your floor, and then if any water spilt, it doesn't migrate up into your wood and blow your panel. So here, where I've cut it short, I'm going to have to put a little bit of uh, mastic on there, just to seal it up. You don't have to be too fancy because you're never going to see it to be honest. Okay, that's the bottom and the side sealed up. Tip it over. There's no exposed timber there now. Only edges left to do are these top ones. And we're going to do them in driftwood. Right, this stuff's like rock and all shit, so I'm going to go wasting it. That's why we've used the grey on other sides. So let's cut this. Job done. Just let it cool down before we trim it. That is us. Done. Slotter in there. Down behind that curtain. In that way. Oh, there it is. Like that. It's going to look tidy when it's finished. Right, we need to make a lid for this box now. Um, it's. Oh, let me show you. Obviously, we don't have the daylight. There isn't a cloud in the sky. It's bloody freezing. So we now need to make. We now need to make a couple of uh, profile pieces. So I've got a little bit of cardboard there. I've got another one here for this end and um, what we'll do is out of these pieces let's zoom back a little bit out of these pieces check it on the edge we're gonna remove timber sorry remove the cardboard mark the cardboard up and then make it a profile to fit these pieces here and the same on that end Right, we're not far off, but I've left a couple of these corners a little bit too open for my liking. So what we're going to do, there's a piece that will go in there. And then we have a piece, a bigger piece, that will fit right snug in there. And there you have it. No need to go off and recut a full piece. We'll just staple them in position and we'll transfer that mark onto our wood. That looks half decent, about the right shape, so we'll offer it up now. Uh, moment of truth, just slide it in. 
<laughs> That's perfect. Not seen a lot of me, have you? <laughs> anyway, what we've got right is we're at a point now where if we get this measurement wrong, we are knackered. Um, this is the last piece of wood we've got, so we need to make sure everything's correct. Right, we've taped that template on. Actually, put a mark on there, which is the right mark, hopefully. We'll just check it now. So that needed to be 1,046. It's there or thereabouts. What I'll do is I always cut to the outside of the mark and then if I need to do any fettling, I've got room. So that there is all set up now. So we've penciled the line on. I'm going to do the same on that end and then we can take these templates off. Get some daylight on the subject now. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off quite a lot of the waste here. Uh, and just, we'll do a final cut after that. We've rounded off the corners, there's a little detail there where it steps back, rounded that corner and that one. Started doing that one and I think I'll hold off, we'll see how it looks when it's all fitted in. Don't forget there's an iron on edge to go around here, so we'll we'll do that detail in a moment. But yeah, it's looking pretty good, that's that end, and that's that end. This is probably the most technical one, but we're going to go and offer it up now and see how it all fits in place. Now I've got it at this stage, we have to take everything out. When I put my cuts in, the two cuts on the ends, um, for these pieces that have been um, <laughs> profiled in, my God, couldn't think of the word there, we, we can't fix them unless we take everything out. So it's a matter of taking off the lid, take off these, unscrew it from the floor, put it all together on the bench, do any dressing up that we need to do on the bench and then we've got two cuts to put in one there and obviously the one over there four brackets to put on for the um for the lid so what we might actually do is fit it all in place attach the brackets for the lid and then um yeah and screw it all in place and it should be one unit then before we cut it but we'll see how we go we'll see how we go so what i've ended up doing is securing this just a couple of uh, furniture blocks and um, we're going to put one more on this edge and that should in theory do us I've done the same on this end put three here just to give it a little bit of strength on the leading edge and there's not going to be any weight on this part it tucks in nice and neat I've also let me show you transferred our marks over so this is where this support here sits on that central and that's the same here so half will be on for this side and then half the lid when it closes down will be supported so we don't get any warping or bending and then it's just a matter of putting the hinges in so we're going to take this back off cut that edge cut that edge put it all back together well, it's dark again. We've finally got all the uh, edge trim done. All the bits are edged now. We've, oh, sugar. We've reattached them. Uh, both ends. Tidied that end up. Put driftwood where you can see it, and where you can't, we've done it with grey. Um, starting to really run out of that stuff, and it's hard to come by. So we've got this tool back out, it's been a while. This is our door hinge tool. So I'm just gonna rattle four holes, I think, along here. 
Maybe just put three in actually, one in the middle, two on the ends. That should do it. Some nice soft closes on there. Oh, I hate this because it's quite messy. <laughs> if you mess it up, it, you've got to start again. I'm just not in the mood to start again. So It's Friday night. Should be at football training with Riley. I've had to bomb it off. And uh, Lisa's took him. So anyway, let's get set up. Let's get this. Let's get these uh, hinges put on, and that's was about done for tonight. Anyway. <laughs> Before I put the screws in, I check everything's squared and lined up. Then I get a screwdriver and I just use the screwdriver head to centre where the screws are going in. That also breaks this hard surface and allows the screw to go in a little bit easier, to be honest. done. That's three hinges screwed into position now. I think we'll tip it up and see how it looks. I've not seen this myself so we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, it's not too bad. Once you shift it away that way a little bit. Once pulled back in a little bit on the front edge. A little about a millimetre. Hopefully we've got that much adjustment on it. So I'll just start adjusting the screws. We'll see where that puts us then. So with these half full hinges, if you turn these, they move sideways. So I'll just show you. There you go. Now we'll check that. That should give us some adjustment. It's about a one mil gap there. Same there. Pretty good, that. This will move the door back. So how it was sticking past the front a couple of inches, uh, a couple of millimetres, this should alter that. So a little look. Oh, we're getting better. Yep, keep going with that. Just do it in increments. Perfect there. A little bit more this side. That's it. Happy with that. I'm happy with that as well. That's that's pretty good now. So we've got our joints all bookended. Grain running through. Try that, see how it closes. It's nice there. <laughs> Toys on the floor. Let's just watch how that hinge opens up. Nice. Happy with that. I can go back in the van now. with that as well trying to 
might be just secure it all in place. It's nearly done. So we'll just get that started and peel, peel half of it off, put it taut and then just press it in as we go along. Good. Now we'll get to this end and we'll just pop them through there like that and continue working our way along. That's it, job done. Last thing to do, fit the lid. So the easiest way is just to put it in one side, drop the other in and push it up. It's nice and snug. And there you go, that's it done. Now there is a protective film on here, I'll just start it off here so you can see it. I'd recommend leaving that in for the very end. Time for the big reveal. Lisa's been really busy in the garage and this is how it looks. Comfortable? Perfect. <laughs> so we've got a little switch on there. I am going to try and find a, a way of putting that on the door and timing it out. Lift your feet, Lise. And there you go, that's our storage for our shoes, dog food, leads, whatever we need. Happy? One less job off the... It's you I'm talking to. Oh! Boo! Boo! Happy Boo! Boo, you happy? Do you like it? You can't get down. Do you like it? Yay! Good girl. <laughs> to protect the step, we've put some, um, like a Kevlar woven tape, transparent tape on there. Um, I don't know if it's Kevlar, but it's a Kevlar effect. I'll zoom right in. So I've done half of it so you can see, and we've rolled that right over the edge. So anything that gets knocked on there, or standing on it, won't wear through too quickly. If it does, we just whip the tape off, clean it off, and try again. So I've only done half of it. You can see there, and there's the other half. I'll put a link in the description to that, because it's really good stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Been a bit of a donkey making that step, it just took all week. But we're there and we've got a good result. We've got a happy wife. Happy wife. Happy wife. Cheers, Liz.